Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to be talking about the Stolt-Cesaro Theorem uh, and it has to do with limits of, sequen of ratios of sequences um, and so really there's a few cases um, which I'm just going to go over well there's I'm going to merge the first two cases um, because they're pretty much the same so basically if we have um, we're, we're trying to find the limit as n goes to infinity of the ratio of two sequences a sub n and b sub n, right? Um, so we're trying to find out what this converges to. And so uh, the Stoll-Cesaro theorem basically says uh, we should look at instead of a sub n over b sub n, we can actually look at a sub n plus 1 minus a sub n over b sub n plus 1 minus b sub n. And uh, there are certain conditions in which this uh, this limit is 1, easier to find, and 2, uh, if we set up the, if our sequences are defined properly, then then we can say that whatever this limits to is equal to whatever this limits to. In particular, so the two cases um, which are only really restriction, restrictions on um, B sub n and A sub n. So this is, these are these cases are sort of infinity over infinity and zero over zero cases. So both um, both of the sequences have to limit to the same thing, which is either zero or infinity, right? Um, because otherwise, if if you knew what one of the sequences limited to, if it limited to a real value, uh, like a a con like three or something, then you wouldn't need an advanced method like this, right? So this is basically sort of like Lobatel's, right? So you have some kind of in indeterminate limit uh, here but you can actually take the differences and you can have something that's easier to to find. It might still be infinity over infinity, but you could have like a simpler polynomial limit or rational limit. So here um, for the infinity over infinity case, so both sequences go to infinity and b sub n must be uh, strictly increasing. Um, and it and you can you can have um, sort of maybe some ups and downs for b sub n, but as long as it as it increases on the long run, sort of long run increasing, uh, so that the differences are are positive, like this this term needs to be positive, basically in the long run. Uh, and then second is um, the zero over zero case in which b sub n is decreasing. So that's why I said I was, I was basically grouping these together. Is it's basically just the same. So so if both sequences can uh, limit to zero and b sub n is decreasing, then you can find this limit and that's equal to this limit. So let's uh, see an example of this uh, in in work. So let's say we want to find the limit of uh, the sequence S uh, is n plus one over two to the n plus one times the sum as i equals one from uh, one to n of two to the i over i. And so here we, we sort of get a feel for uh, you know, how, how this subtraction here is very useful. In particular, if we let this piece be our a sub n and um, just move this, sort of move this n plus 1 into the denominator so that this little piece is b sub n, but if this is a sub n, then we see that if we just increase this to a sub n plus 1, right, that's 
that that would be a sub n plus 1. Then when we subtract the 2, everything cancels out, right? Because we just have a sum that we have one more term on the end, and then we're su subtracting the, the previous sum. So all we get is just that one term. Uh, so that's why this Stolzicero theorem is very helpful for s sums like this, because there's, I mean, there might be an explicit form for 2 to the i over i, but I don't really know it off the top of my head, and it's just much easier to sort of subtract, especially, especially for things that are like sums, especially when you have limits of sums. This is when Stolzicero is very helpful. So, um, so like I said, a sub n plus 1 minus a sub n, would just be 2 to the n plus 1, oops, 2, and then b, uh, b to the n plus 1 would be 2 to the n plus 2 over n, n plus 2, so uh, write the denominator, uh, so here we have b sub n plus 1 minus b sub n, and then uh, it's clear we can divide out by 2 to the n plus 1, and um, in the numerator and denominator, and then multiply by n plus 1 and n plus 2. Uh, so I'll do that. And so we get the final expression. Well, I mean, this isn't simplified, but it's clear to see that this will just um, approach 1. So that would be the answer to uh, this limit. Now, there's one more form of Stoltz's zero. Um, which I'll go over in sort of like a second half of this video. So, which I mean, but like right now, uh, so this video is probably going to be pretty long. Um, and basically, what it says is that if we let y sub n be equal to the ratio of x sub n and x sub n minus 1, so consecutive terms in a sequence basically says that whatever y sub n converges to all right if y sub n converges to something um, let's say y sub n converges to some value a then Stoltz zero basically says that n the nth root of x to the n converge also converges to a and this sort of makes sense. So uh, let's think about because um, I'm not I'm not going to be proving these, but sort of an intuition. I I mean this is pretty intuitive. Is that x sub n over x sub n minus one? If it's approaching some value a, that would mean that sort of inductively x is approaching a geometric progression which means that it would be some value, some constant times a to the n. Well then if you take the nth root, that would just be the nth root of some constant times a. But the nth root of a constant goes to 0 as n goes to, in, or not uh, 0, 1. It goes to 1 as n goes to infinity. So you're just left with a. Um, and so I think one really cool Prop, like consequence of this is that uh, we know the Fibonacci numbers are very closely tied into the golden ratio, right? So the ratio of two consecutive Fibonacci numbers approaches the golden ratio. But that means that the nth root of a Fibonacci number, of the nth Fibonacci number, also approaches the golden ratio, which I think is very, very cool. Uh, so now I'll be uh, actually solving a problem uh, using this uh, form of Stoltz zero. So we are given a sequence x sub n, and so we are told that the limit as n goes to infinity of x to the n times x to the n plus 2, or x sub n and x sub n plus 2, sorry, divided by x sub n plus 1 squared, the, the limit, uh, this should be n, is 4. So this sequence approaches 4. Uh, so we want to 
we want to know what the n squared root of x to the n approaches. So you think, okay, so that's that's already pretty weird. But the n squared root is just the nth root of the nth root. So we think that we can apply uh, the last form of Stoltz to zero maybe twice, right? Um, so we can think about like what would be the nth root of x to the n over the n minus one-th root to x to the n or something like that. Well, first we want to get some grip on what this expression is telling us. What is this weird, you know, because we sort of have, we have symmetry between these two terms, right? I guess if you add up the indices, you get n plus two. And if you add up the indices here, you also get n plus two. Uh, because you have x x t x sub n my x sub n plus one times x sub n plus one, so you have two n n, sub n plus ones. And I think that uh, it's more obvious, or I mean, I th I think it's pretty obvious that this expression is actually a fraction of fractions. So uh, I rewrote it as x sub n over x sub n plus 1 over x sub n plus 1 over x sub n plus 2. And so now we sort of see this uh, ratio of, of sequences popping up. Uh, in particular, I'm going to reciprocate the whole thing. Uh, that, that should be a 4, sorry. And I'm going to let y uh, I'm going to let this fraction be y sub n, right? Uh, so this will be y sub n plus 1, but I'm going to rewrite this as y sub n over y sub n minus 1. So y, y sub n over y sub n minus 1 is approaching 1 over 4. And so now we see that we have this form of Stoltz zero. So uh, since the ratios are approaching a, then we know that the nth root, the nth root of y sub n is approaching one fourth. So the nth root of y sub n, and this, so like I said, this is just the nth root of x to the n over x to the n plus 1 is approaching 1 fourth. So now let's try and work backwards from, uh, from here, right? So let's say that the nth root of x to the n is our sequence. So basically we have y, or I'll say z sub n would be equal to the nth root of x to the n over the n minus 1 root of x to the n minus 1. And so basically this will uh, have the same limit as this, which will you know, have the same limit as this. So, well, what will this be, right? So we kind of have, we have this uh, expression over here, we have this expression over here. Um, well, let me, let me take the reciprocal over here. So we get that the nth root of x sub n over x sub n sub n minus 1 is approaching 4. And so we sort of see we have very similar expressions except that this is n minus 1 root. Um, so we think maybe these actually have the same 
uh, expression. Okay, so what we can do is we can use the fact that this limit approaches four, and we can say that the nth root of x to the n approaches four times the nth root of x to the n minus one, which means that this will be approaching four times x to the n minus one to the one over n over x to the n minus one to the one over n minus one, which um, like that, which is equal to so this with this is four, and then we have the same base with different powers, which we can subtract. Um, so let me think here. That, that okay, and so this becomes four times so one over. I could have written four over, but x to the n minus one over to the one uh, in, let's see here, uh, to the one over n squared minus n power. And so what we're saying is that this is the same limit as x to the n to the one over n squared, right? And in some sense, right, these two, I guess if this had some limiting value L, then it's pretty clear that this also has the same limiting value L, uh, because they're basically very s similar structure. And if you were to plug in, in uh, N right here, so you would get X to the N to the one over, if you plug in N, like instead of uh, like n plus one, basically, um, or if you just increase n by one in, in all of these, uh, then you get x to the n to the one over n squared plus n. And we see that this fraction, the really the dominant term here is one over n squared. So these two should have the same limiting value. In other words, four over L would be equal to L. And um, another spe specification in this problem that I didn't mention is that x, all of the x's are positive, right? So finally, we reach our conclusion that the limit, obviously this limit should be positive, and so the limit is just two. So, I know that was a lot, but I just didn't feel like making multiple videos since it's the same topic. But uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this video, and I hope to see you in my other videos.